Hey guys, Neon Nezzy, finally back with another Destiny 6 video after three whole days. So let me just get some things out of the way, okay? First of all, yes, there was a fire alarm. Two, there was no fire. I live on campus and every time, every now and then they do these drills just to keep everybody's head in check. But last time there was a fire alarm, there was actually a fire. So it's a good thing I ran. Um, second of all, the reason why I haven't been online is because I had midterms. So, but now I don't. So let's get straight into the video. Today, we are going to be spending a little time on damage over time. Basically, I'm gonna try and give you guys a better understanding of damage over time, how it works, and then we're gonna go into a poor man's team. Now, sadly, I've been so busy for the past three days, I haven't been able to build the team completely, but I have acquired the units, and I will just tell you guys what to build, how to build them, and how to use them, okay? So first of all, the reason why we're, why we're doing this run is just count the hits that Ignis does with his A and Natalia does with his A, okay? With her A. Let's take a look at Ignis. One, two, three. I think that was like three hits. And then here is Natalia. One, two, three, four, five, six. So basically, both of those hits were multi-hits, right? So that's gonna come in handy later, okay guys? So remember that. Basically, the last video I did was using a lot of five-star monsters and a conquest team to deal over 100,000 damage in conquest mode on the hard boss, right? Today, this is the team that I think everybody that doesn't have five-star units or... I mean, if you guys have units that can replace these units in their specific field, go for it. But if not, this could be your poor man's team, which is actually going to be surprisingly efficient, okay? So first of all, what do you need for conquest? Well, you basically need someone to deal damage over time because those bosses are really, really tanky. So did you guys know that not all damage over time effects, um, not all damage over time effects kind of scale off of HP? Hold on. I'm sorry guys, I, sh I should have had this pulled up, but I didn't. So we have Stoyan Kolev to thank for this information. I trust this guy, he's given me information in the past and it's all been correct. So now I just want everyone else to know. Burn, also if you guys need to write this stuff down, write it down, but I'll also have it uh, copy and paste it in the description down below. So you guys should be able to have access to it regardless. So first of all, there's burn, bleed, poison, and shock. Four different um, dots that exist in the game. So first of all, burn. It will deal damage based on your attack and scales with percentage damage or percentage attack increase effects. So ruin your monster that do burn with bravery and then try to run it with um, units that can actually increase attack. Then there's bleed, which is I think what we all think of when it comes to damage over time, which will actually deal 3% of the target's current HP, but in PvP, like in arena, it will go down to 1%. So that's 3%, and that's also of the current HP, guys. Not max, but current HP. It does scale with damage, and it has a cap of 99999. Basically, 99,999. Poison is the same as burn, but it should lower the target status resistance so you can land more debuffs. And unlike all the other dots in the game, poison can stack up to three times, while burn, bleed, and shock only stack up to two times. And shock is the same as burn, but what it will do is it will interrupt the enemy's movement and it will interrupt their skills. So now that we have that out of the way, let me just explain what this team is. Regardless of what I just told you guys, I would recommend your team to consist of Ignis, the burner, and anybody else that does bleed and then a attack uh, and then a status activation rate buffer. The reason why I'm saying this is because Bleed is the only um, is the only dot in the game that deals with that scales off HP. So it will do the most damage, give it the most bang for every tick that goes through. Ignis has a burn. He's a three-star unit, has shitty, shitty, shitty stats. But last time we covered him in the last video I did, we looked at his skill, his second skill, which will actually increase the target's current debuff duration by 12 seconds. 
at level three, it goes up to 12 seconds. And at level two, your uh, chance to do this debuff will actually go up to 50% from 40%. He's a three-star free-to-play monster. And, I, and I'm not joking when I say that I'm going to make a second Ignis, okay? So let's get into this free-to-play attack. Uh, I keep saying attack. Status activation rate buffer. Tian Jin from the Jin faction. His first skill is basically a poor man's Helga. He will increase attack by 25%. Re remember, he is his, uh, his first skill right now is, in, is at level 3. But he will in increase attack by 25%, which is great because all dots, as we see, uh, scale off of attack. Um, and then the status activation chance will get increased by 30% 30, uh, 30 for 13 seconds. If you guys take it to level 5, which I suggest you guys do, will actually go up to 18 seconds. And then his second ability is what I would suggest you guys use at the very end, because it will deal damage, and for every hit that you land, you will decrease uh, cooldown of everybody else but yourself by 3 seconds per hit. So try to group the other monsters up, or since this is a in-line attack, try to get all the monsters in a line, and then try to hit as many as you can. Ruin him with Vitality because he does no attack. Both of his skills are just buffs. They have no damage scaling in them. So ruin, them with by, ruin him with Vitality to make your team overall tankier. Ignis, if you guys want to learn how to ruin him just or orb him, go to my other video. So here I'm using Jackal, which is a three-star uh, bleeder on his first skill. And it's actually pretty decent, guys. At level 5, it goes up to a cooldown of 31 seconds, 15% chance to cause bleeding, and it goes on for 9 seconds. 9 seconds plus Ignis says 24 seconds, uh, 33 seconds. Okay. So let me just explain this setup right, right, right here. True Helga buffs by 50%. Her size activation chance will increase by 50% for the whole team. Tianjin sadly only does 30%. So let me tell you guys how to get it to a higher activation chance. First of all, make Tianjin your leader. Even if it's at equal or an advantage, make him your leader. If it's at a disadvantage, then make someone else a leader or just not do conquest that day. I mean, it's up to you. But basically, Tianjin for the leader, because as you guys can see, he will increase the status activation chance of all allies, not just paper, not just rock, not just from some faction, but all allies by 5%. And then right here on the striker position, I have rock Ebonia. Imagine that it's the other Ebonia. Imagine that I'm with her sister because her sister will actually increase status activation chance by seven seconds. So with five seconds plus seven seconds, that is a total of 12 seconds with a 30% buff. That's a 42 seconds, 42 with poor man, 50 with Pay to win, 5 star Helga. 8% difference? Not a lot, right? Also, why is it important that your bleed or your burn or any dot skill that you're doing is a multi-hit? Remember now, from the beginning of the video, I didn't just do that to like pass the time with you guys, right? That, that, that run had a purpose. Every hit that Natalia did, she did 6 hits, right? She has a 12% to land the bleed, with Helga's buff that goes up to 52% uh, and she does it 6 or 5 times. Each hit has a 60% chance to land the debuff. Let's take a look at Jackal at max skill, so 15% chance with the, uh, with the with the Tianjin buff and with the double uh, activation leads in both the first leader and the striker position, that's a 42% buff, right? 42 plus the 15, that's a 59% chance. I think I did that, no, that's a 57% chance. 57% chance, but with a multi-hit, every hit that you do has a chance of landing it. And as long as it's over 50%, I see your chance of landing the bleed are pretty good. Now, Ignis only hits three times, so you might not land it every single time. But honestly, it's the bleed that you want to land since that is the true dot. That is the true thing that scales off of HP. So rune um, him. Uh, 
I say him, you guys have no idea who I'm talking about. Rune Tianjin with Vitality. Rune your Burner and your Bleeder with, um, with, with Bravery. Not crit rate, bravery, because concentration will do nothing for you. Like critting with your bleed skills does nothing. So bravery on those two, and then for your final leader, uh, for your final striker lead, it's up to you guys. However, I would strongly recommend you guys uh, just build that monster or that unit with uh, vitality, just to make your team tankier. All right. If you guys look over here, my Helga is on vitality. Why? Just so that she's tank and the team can uh, the team can last. So let me show you the orbs on her really really quick, because a lot of people wanted to see them. Here is my Natalia. Whoops. Also with precision crests, don't feel bad to just equip one star crest like I do, because you're not re you're really not looking for the stats that they give, rather the the passive stat that you get, which is a uh, five percent um, increase in status activation if you have two precision crests, and if you have four precision crests, then you should get a ten percent activation uh, buff. So here's Ignis, all on bravery. And then again, your leader, you guys can, I mean, your striker leader can be anybody, but I have Yona, and I have her on Vitality because she is the tankiest uh, unit that I have. Okay, so just to prove to you guys that I'm not, you know, like bullshitting you guys, I'm legit going to make two teams, okay? And I'll show them in a future video. It's just, I don't, I don't have time to build them because I was having midterms. But right here, I just went over here to discover secret dungeon, and I discovered an Ignis dungeon like a few minutes ago. And now I'm just gonna farm the crap out of it with my farming team, which is I think over here. Yeah, okay. We're just gonna do this on auto repeat, and we're gonna get another Ignis, and I'm gonna build him up too. So basically, I'm gonna have two teams. My five star uh, team is going to be for hell mode, and the other team that I just show showed you guys is gonna be for hard mode in conquest. Um, is there anything else I want to tell you guys? Okay, so first of all, I should be active again, like every day should be uploading a video. If I get busy, I'll tell you guys uh, in advance. But first of all, tomorrow I will be uploading another four star guide. And I think it's going to be on the Inua faction. And then I should be... Um, I should be uploading a video on all the other factions at four stars. If I get enough requests for it, I might do a uh, faction guide on three stars as well. And then sometime in the next week, I should be making a video on the top 10 nat fives in the game. And also should be doing a summoning video the moment this rotation ends, because right now the rotation is Francisca and Gunter. And I have both Francisca's and both Gunter's, so it's not really of much use to me. But I can't show you guys now because I'm doing runs. Well, actually, oh, I wanted to farm Ignis. But basically, um, when I do the summoning video, it should be really, really fun to watch because I have a ton of scrolls, okay? I mean, not a whole lot. I mean, some of you guys probably have a lot more scrolls than I do. But well, we're summons. Check this out, alright? I have two Legendary Jin scrolls, one Inua, one Medina, one Silvis, and then I have seven Legendary Summoning scrolls. So we should get like at least a few Nat 5s, and if the next rotation is either Carlota or Kerr, I should be doing a bunch of the 10x uh, Ruby summons, so, that's, so, so that should be really fun as well. So let me just go back to farming my Ignis. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, sorry I haven't been active for a few days. Also, someone told me to stop playing music in the background, and I agree, it, it doesn't provide the best quality. The only, the only reason it's playing today is because there is some noise in the background that isn't very pleasant, and it could like be distracting, so I have music playing in the background because I feel like that is less, dis less distracting. But in my future videos, I should have either better quality music, or just have no music, no music, no, sorry. Haven't made a video in so long. Either better quality music or higher, uh, oh my god, I can't talk. Better quality music or no music at all, all right? 
So I'm gonna make my second Ignis, ruin him up or orb him up. And until the next time, Neon out.